Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I want to talk about five crafty things that I am no longer buying. Since I con married my craft room, I decluttered it, I put my hands on every item I owned and asked myself, does this spark joy? Is this useful? Will I use it? I have come up with a list of five, nay, maybe actually six when we really get down to it, of things I no longer buy as far as craft products go. Now, this list is probably going to be different than what your list would be, and keep in mind that I've been crafting for a long time, so I have a, um, a good stockpile of supplies still, even though I've decluttered, still in my stash. So my list would probably be different than yours, and I'm no, in no means trying to advise you on what you should keep and what you should get rid of or no longer buy. So this is just purely my opinion and I would love to know uh, what your crafty items that you no longer buy would be in the comments below. So I hope it inspires you to kind of really think about what you purchase and whether it adds value to your crafting or not. So the first thing that I am no longer buying but has served me well in the past are bulk card and envelope packs. So it's very tempting. You go into the store and you see this bulk pack of 50 cards and envelopes and oh the envelopes are right there. They match the card size. All you got to do is decorate the card. Better get four or five packs because they're on sale, right? That's me. That's old Lindsay. Uh, new Lindsay would be then and then as I was conmarrying I was like well you know I'm not gonna, I'm gonna store these at the store. I'm only gonna buy them when I run out. And then the more and more I use them up, and I have bought the ones at Michael's, the Hot Buys, for like five bucks where you get like 60 cards and 60 envelopes, and they're cute and all, but they're so flimsy, and I'm kind of really sick of using them. And then there's the ones that are like 50 white cards and 50 envelopes, and again, they're kind of flimsy, but I've used them up because they're convenient. But then I started to realize I really don't need to buy them. I've got so much white card stock. I really prefer card bases made from the 110 pound recollections card stock anyway. So it's like, why am I buying these? I don't like them as much. I have plenty of card stock to make my own bases and I have tons of pattern paper to make envelopes. I can make them on the back side so the, the pattern is on the inside so I can still mail them fine. And I would actually use up what I have. So instead of buying uh, those cheap uh, bulk packs of cards and envelopes, what I'm going to do and what I have, what I used to do actually, is make my own envelopes using either a template or my envelope punch board because it's so easy. I can sit down in front of the TV and make a ton of envelopes in the sizes I most often use and then have them ready to go or just make them as I need them and then I won't have random envelopes left over. Um, I've actually bought a big box of um, envelopes, invitation size envelopes, thinking great, I'll never have to make an envelope for this size again and they got stuck shut because I work in a basement and I'm not the best about remembering to turn the dehumidifier on. So they all stuck and I wasted that money on that big bulk pack of envelopes. So no more, make them as I need them out of the scrap, uh, scrap of paper I already have. So there's the first thing I'm no longer buying. And kind of tag on with that um, would also be bulk packs of multicolored cardstock because, um, and I think that's a great way to get started in crafting is to buy those those bulk packs of cardstock with all the different, like hundred different colors, because then you get to see what you're really gonna use. But I would keep buying them and they would go on sale like four for $10 and I would keep buying them. And then when I was going through and sorting out all my cardstock into little job ticket holders, um, and you can see that in my KonMari video, I got that idea from Jennifer McGuire, who is brilliant when it comes to organizing. Um, I was like, I had so many sheets of this hideous neon, purple cardstock. Of course I had so much fake because I never used it because it was so hideous and it's in like every value pack of cardstock you find. And there's also this really pale gray blue and then this gray navy color that are they're just awful. And I had so much of it because it came in those multi packs of cardstock and I never used it. <clears throat> so I decided to keep some of the lighter blue stuff and I use it in my stamp box when I um put my page protectors in there. I just slide a one of those sheets of cardstock in there to keep it from wobbling around, but I gave away the rest because it was just too much. I didn't like the color. Why am I holding on to it? So I decided instead of that, um, as I'm using my cardstock, if I'm noticing that I'm low or running out of a color that I love, I'll write it down and then I'll just go buy a few sheets the next time they have a paper sale at Joann's. So that works for me. Um, so no more bulk cardstock. And I'm kind of counting that as all all one of the bulk, the bulk cardstocky card things. So I'm just counting that is one because I want to keep it to five. I think five is a nice number. Uh, the next thing I'm no longer buying are dies to match stamp sets. And I never really got that into that trend to begin with. But um, the thing I notice for the ones that I do have, they really don't get used as much as they should for the cost. Um, I did invest in a brother scan and cut and that thing is brilliant. It does exactly as advertised. You can stamp on your paper, color it, pop it in there. It'll scan it and it will 
just as good as a um, a physical die and that way I can have a die to match every one of my stamps and not have to pay a, he a penny more. I think I paid like $2.50 for that machine and I mean the stamp dies are like $24 usually to or more for each stamp set that you need to buy dies for. I mean 10 stamp 10 sets 10 stamp sets with dies just the dies would be the same price as that machine so it was kind of a no-brainer so that's what i bought instead of no longer buying dies to match stamp sets i will buy dies in like basic generic shapes that um i can use over and over and over again but um I have I don't have that many dies and I really don't have the want for more dies. They have to be very useful and very multi-purpose for me to um, give them space on my shelf. So that's another thing I am no longer buying. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy it. I'm just saying for me, I'm no longer buying it. Another thing I'll no longer buy, and this will make many of you cringe, is ribbon. Ribbon and lace, those things. I'm never buying them again. Um, well, I say, maybe I should never say never, never say never, never is such a tricky word, but I'm no longer buying them. Um, <laughs> I try my best. I, I'm going to try my best to never buy them again because I gave away about two thirds of my ribbon collection. I am burnt out on ribbon. I did some free companies that um, <clears throat> ribbon was one of the main focuses of their business and I've used ribbon in about every conceivable way I can imagine and I do not have the desire to use ribbon very much anymore and I have a I, I kept basic colors in satin and grow grain I will use those um, I just used some on a card the other day but I'm going to use up what I have and for the most part if I want ribbon on a card I'm going to use a strip of pattern paper or a piece of washi tape or a couple lines of string around the uh, the card. I have so much ribbon and uh, for a while there I was crazy about it too. Before Actually before I started doing all that freelance work I collected ribbon like crazy and I realized it really outpaced my ability to use it. I still think I have enough ribbon of what I kept that I can put ribbon on every project I make until I die. I do not need any more. So it's not like I'm never going to use ribbon again. I'm going to use what I have but I'm not buying any more because I just don't use it enough to justify it. I have plenty. Um, Another thing I am no longer buying is more craft storage because after I did the KonMari method, I had way more storage than I needed. Um, I was like taking baskets and bins and boxes out of my craft room and not bringing them back in because I didn't have things to put in them. So as I emptied something out, I got rid of it and I have more than enough storage. Um, the only exception to that would be if I decide to um, finish the room down here and I decide that I want some nicer furniture. I mean, I might just get rid of everything I have and just make a few built-ins or something, but yeah, no more craft storage. The last piece of craft storage I bought was some like little shallow drawers, rainbow drawers. You've probably seen them at like Joann's or Sam's Club, um, or I think I got them online at Michael's or Joann's. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's just those little, those like little plastic drawers that pull out. It's really cute. It's upstairs in my office, but um, I bought that before I did the KonMari method. And it's like, as soon as I did it, I'm like, oh, why did I buy that? I mean, it was only 25 bucks, but still it was like, I really didn't need it. Um, so no more craft storage. Done with that. Using what I have, and if I do get overfilled, then it's time to get rid of some stuff. But I think that I've changed my ways enough that I won't let things get overfilled again. And the last thing that I will no longer buy are duplicates, just in case. I was really bad at this one. This was something I've always, I, I always... Um, would buy extra when there was a big de big sale or something. I would get it just in case, you know. I'm not buying non-consumables just in case, I should say, like scissors. Um, I went to Martin's once, which is a, a store in Maine. If you're not, if, you, if you've never been to Maine, we have this chain called Martin's, and it's a surplus and salvage store. And um, they have everything from clothing to bakeware to hardware to fabric. They have amazing fabric departments. Um, and like the fabric is gorgeous. It's like $2.50 a yard to $3.50 a yard. And it's stuff that would be like, you know, $10 to $15 a yard in a quilt shop. They just get like last year's fabric. And um, I have learned to do not go in there unless you have a specific project you're buying for, for, and, um, otherwise, you know, you just avoid it. I can't come out of there empty handed. I always find these treasures and it's fun. It's really fun to shop there, but I, that's where I buy my duplicates just in case. Cause they have a slogan that goes, you should have bought it when you saw it at Martin's. So, and that's what you think when you go in there. Cause it's like, well, scissors, I got the fun, these great pair of scissors for 69 cents. I bought like 15 pair. I am not kidding because it's like, oh my gosh, this is such a great deal. I'm gonna, you know, and I, I'm like, I'll buy them for classes, for classes. I hardly ever teach in-person classes anymore. And a lot of the times, if I'm gonna go teach at a stamp show, I'm, I'm telling people to bring their basic materials, which would be adhesive scissors and a black pen or something. I'm having them bring that 
Why on earth do I need that many? So it makes me not take care of my scissors. So I'll leave a pair of scissors here. I'll leave a pair of scissors there. Thank goodness I don't have little children. My children are older. Can you imagine how unbaby proof my house is? Because I've got scissors all over the freaking place. You know, no more non-consumable duplicates just in case. Same goes for like, um, oh gosh, well, yarn. Oh my word, yarn. I'd find a good deal of yarn at Martin's and I would buy totes of it. It was just, it was just insane. So no more duplicates just in case. Um, I haven't gotten rid of many duplicates. I still have all of those scissors, but they're all in one bucket separate for like, you know, classes, classes. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, I think it's kind of silly to get rid of them because they're a useful thing. And you know, we all, you know, if all friends over to craft or something, we all have our own pair of scissors, so that's nice. But I notice I only have one of something, I take care of it, and I always put it back where it goes. Like, if I have one bone folder, I take care of it. I have one pair of, like, my scrapbooking scissors, my cutter bees. I've had those for, like, 20 years, and they always go in that little cup on my desk, because I've got one pair. I've got one pair on my desk and one pair in my scrapbook bag, and they are always there, because I only have one in each place, so I take care of it. So, um, I think that's something that that I really changed during the KonMari method is not to not buying duplicates and really being, um, really being, you know, strategic. Do I, you know, and taking care of your things and having a place for your things. If you have a place for every one of your things, you don't need 25 duplicates for when you lose that thing. It's just like, um, a lot of people say they go to the store and they have to buy, rebuy something because they can't find their original gesso or their original um, tube of black paint or their original bone folder. So they have to go buy another one. So that just seems so silly because if we just didn't have so much, we could keep track of it. And I think about when I began scrapbooking, for instance, everything I had fit into one of those um, rolly scrapbooking totes. And I had so much fun scrapbooking. It was so easy to grab that tote, take it out to the kitchen table and work or take it to a crop and work or go through a friend's house and work that um that it was great and it was convenient and I did a lot more of it and when I go to a crop now I bring one bag and that is it because I know the less I bring the more I do uh, but when I come down here into my craft room I have so many options that can be overwhelming and daunting to do that same task that I used to enjoy so much when I had uh so few many fewer items um so that's something that you know, I'm thinking about as I go through my decluttering process in my craft room mostly, and even in the rest of my house, I really don't have a, a like a, a possession problem in other areas of my house, but in my craft room, it is, uh, it's really difficult. And when this morning when I sat down to create this list of five things I'm no longer by, I started thinking, I'm like, I honestly, at first I couldn't think of anything. So I want you guys to think of things and put them in the comments below because I couldn't think of anything. It's like, well, I can't think of anything I wouldn't buy again. But then I started to think really scrutinized. So I was thinking, well, watercolor sets, I don't need any more, but would I not buy any more? It's like, no, I love trying new sets of watercolors. Of course I'm going to buy more. <laughs> Who are we kidding here? You know, but it's like, yeah, it's the lower quality things that I buy in bulk are the things that I'm generally not going to buy anymore. Um, but then again, if you're just starting out, your list is going to be completely different because you got to start somewhere. You got to see if you like things before you invest in the best or you invest in, you know, invest a lot of money. But then again, if you are starting off, you might as well just buy the good stuff first and not have to, you know, work your way up to it and not have to um, kind of get by, you know, until you can treat yourself to something good and prove that you're going to use it. I don't know. There's so many different ways to look at this. I know, like... If, uh, if there's something I really want and I'm really liking and then I settle for something else and I buy that, I am more likely, I am just as likely to buy that first thing that I wanted to begin with the next time I get the chance because I'm always going to feel that yearning like, oh, I should have just got, I wish I got that one. I, you know, you'll have that sense of, of yearning. So I think it's probably best to, to kind of think about it, choose the thing you really want wait until you can afford it or wait till it goes on sale, but keep that kind of in your mind, that, that eye on the prize and just buy that thing instead of buying like, you know, 10 different sets of colored pencils that are okay because you didn't want to, you know, spend the money on the polychromos that were what you really wanted to begin with, but were too expensive. When you add up everything that you bought, all of the lower quality ones together, it probably would cost more than the one thing that you really wanted. Just like, you know, you might not want to spend, um, you know, pretty storage at, the container store or Target or, you know, one of these really fancy high-end stores. So you go to the Dollar Tree and you buy a bunch of like cheap little bins, you know, and you do that every week, you know, after a couple of weeks, you would have spent what you would have spent, what you, at the Dollar Tree, what you would have spent on what you really wanted at like the container store or, 
I think it just, I think it, I think it kind of um, overlaps into all areas of your life. I mean, like grocery shopping, instead of buying like kind of crappy junk food, um, you could buy the more expensive, like, okay, so there's this, uh, the vegan, vegan silk yogurt. It's really good. It's very expensive. So I would never buy it, but it's like, well, instead of buying this bag of chips every week, why don't I buy a couple of those, you know, silk yogurts are same price. You know, I'm getting less, you know, volume of food, but it's better quality and it's better for me. You know, it's equals out to be the same price. So, you know, duh, buy the healthy thing. So I'm sorry this has been so long. At least five things out of the way for those people that, you know, they're the minimalists that don't want to listen to me gab about all this other stuff. But boy, it really does change your whole perspective on life when you do the KonMari method. Um, and for those of you that don't know what that is, that's uh, from the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. I will link at the video description in case you want to go uh, have a look at it. I listened to the audiobook. Um, and I also listened to her audiobook Spark Joy, and both of those were so helpful in for me because I am definitely, I definitely have hoarder tendencies, and for me to be able to get rid of so much stuff, even though I have a lot still, I mean, I don't want anybody to think that I'm trying to pass myself off as some minimalist, um, although I do, I am kind of going in that direction, um, I'm not going to like brag like oh, yes I'm a minimalist now I mean clearly I am not but um but I found that so helpful um to really focus on what I what I do appreciate and what adds value to my life instead of having all these things that really don't that book is not a book on minimalism by the way a lot of people have criticized her because they're like well that's not real minimalism no it's not I think she's a minimalist but that book is not about minimalism it's about focusing on the things that bring joy to your life, that add value to your life, that are useful in your life, and um, kind of getting rid of the things that aren't. And her favorite, my favorite quote, and I know it's a lot of your favorites too, because a lot of you commented on my last uh, vlog that I did on this, um, was store it at the store. And I've realized that I can store a lot of things at the store. I don't need to buy everything. Um, and that's why Martin's is so tricky for me, because they, it's you never know what you're going to get, and it's never going to be there again. So I know that if I want to control what I'm buying, do not go into that store because I have no control there and that's part of it too that's not it's not giving yourself more willpower it's avoiding situations where you know you have no willpower and um, and for me that was a really important lesson to learn so if I can help anybody um, then I'm happy to but I want to know what your what your list or your five things you're no longer buying or even if it's just one thing you're no longer buying in the craft department I would like to know what it is I'm curious so post it in the comments below thank you so much for watching please give us a thumbs up if you liked it and until next time happy crafting <laughs>